Hi, Jordan. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Um, just before I get started, I just wanted to say, actually, just a big thank you for everything you're doing for the Hairy Men community. Keep flying that. You're doing us all proud out there. Just wanted to... <laughs> Are you that hairy? You don't seem that hairy. I'm pretty hairy. Oh, there, right. The, the the facial hair is the no facial hair is deceiving. Yeah, no, I know. I just I, that, that keeps that a surprise, you see. Um, I'm gonna be, <laughs> begin. I mean, let's go back to the start. I want I, I just wanted to know how you first came to know Sebastian. Yeah, we actually we actually met um on the street in Mexico City, exactly where we uh shot the movie. He was he was uh walking his dog in the plaza. And I I was there and I had actually watched his movie the night before. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was a it was a fateful meeting. And then and then we we ended up talking and then having a dinner after that. And and kind of the rest is history. I mean, of course, the, the sort of idea in this film is that you go to Sebastian with a view to making a project together. Does yeah. that give a reality at all? Is that how this project came to be? No, actually, it's quite the opposite. He he contacted me um, and asked me if he, you know, I think meeting me, I like, um, I inspired him in a very negative way, if that makes sense. Usually, like, you, like you'll, you'll get inspiration for your muse and you'll be like, oh, my God, they're so beautiful and talented. But he was like, oh, my muse is like so, so annoying and represents everything I hate in the world. So, uh, yeah, he... He and but all you know, he also thought I was funny and you know, he 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 liked my videos. So he he called me and asked if I wanted to do it. But no, I didn't I didn't at all talk about working together in any way. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> I just thought maybe the felt because because I was watching and it, it felt like the sort of thing that could have been that kind of clever spin on, on reality. But I mean, how much I'm really interested to know how much of a kind of um, a challenge it is playing a version of yourself, because it sounds like on paper that would be an easier thing to do. But I actually always imagine when actors have to kind of play even fictionalized versions of who they are, that yeah. it would be quite hard because you can't really get lost in the character as such. Yeah, I mean, I think that. I think that the story really helped me not get too in my head about that. Cause it really, it's like, if this was just like a character study of like a guy living his, an influencer living his life, then it would, I think be a little weirder, but there's always like this, this uh, driving story. So, you know, the character kind of, I was just living in the story and being like, how, how would this person react to this scene? Um, I think like the one the one part like when I have that little spiral inside the apartment um, and I'm like looking at my own social media and I'm reading his journals about me that was that was hard um, and I don't know yeah it got confusing at times because I'm like what is real and what is not real because like it you know it draws from very like actual facts and reality so yeah I mean it it was hard, but also not hard. I, that's such a bad answer, but yeah, confusing, confusing at times. But uh, uh, you know, I'm I, I was on the actual drugs I was on in the movie a lot in the movie, so that helped. Um, <laughs> so I was either like solving a mystery or doing drugs. So so uh, that part made it a little easier. And it's funny enough, solving mysteries while doing drugs is probably the funniest way to solve mysteries yeah, as well. Yeah, exa exactly. Did you so did you kind of just have to treat in, in some in, in certain scenes, did you just have to treat this as a character on a page? Yeah, I mean, I, I treated it the same way I would act in anything else. Like there was a script, there were lines. Sometimes I helped write the lines, sometimes I improvised, but I but anything I do. I usually add my own spin to it anyway. I, you know, I did like Miss Marvel and like I was going off script in ways that were like insane that could never end up on a Disney show. And they were like, okay, can we like take it back a little? But yeah, I'm like, I, I am in comedy. So I'm used to, I'm used to putting my own spin on things. But yeah, I just, I, you know, I, yeah, I treated it like I was an actor <laughs> there to do a job and and just did did what was asked of me for the most part yeah well, was there anything of the jordan firstman in the film that you were kind of envious of perhaps wishing you could be more like yourself and conversely were there any traits that you're quite pleased you don't share with the with the version we see in the film i think something that i share i share that 
I like is like uh, his optimism. And, uh, you know, I, I really like that scene. I like that scene where he he says, you can't hurt me because I'm happy. I'm a happy clown. I think that is who I I strive to be a little more. And I have parts of it, but like I and, you know, of course, underneath of that is the saddest clown that's ever existed, which is displayed uh, in the second half of the movie. But uh yeah, I mean, it's life is life is hard and life is really sad, especially for sensitive people. And I, I'm a very sensitive person. So, you know, I and I think people do look at me in real life and think, oh, my God, you're you're having fun all the time or you're you can make a joke out of anything. But underneath of that is obviously some like real darkness. So I wish I I I wish I could like tap into the happy clown a little more than I can in real life. Um, and then something that I mean I, basically everything else is is kind of different I think I'm way more socially adept than the character I think I can like see what's happening around me um I think the character lacks uh social tact and uh I think I think in real life I'm like aware of everything that's happening in the room and like how I'm coming across maybe to a fault so that that part I think is very different no, I think we could all do with tapping into the happy clown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Often. Uh, but I'm going to ask I mean, about the, the sex and the nudity in the film. And of course, you show a, a fair amount of yourself in this. Were there any apprehensions in those initial conversations with Sebastian about, about those scenes? Were there any nerves at all? Was it just very much, let's just do this? <laughs> yeah, I think the nerves came more while we were doing it. Um before it, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so easy. I'm like already doing this all the time. So like, this will be no problem. <laughs> and then, yeah, the reality of like, of even trying to get hard, you know, when there's a, when there's a, a straight sound guy, you know, in a dirty t-shirt uh, and, and, you know, there's cameras moving everywhere. Uh, it's, it's just, it's a way different experience. So yeah, I think it it wasn't nerves, but I was like, oh shit, like this is very hard. And like, you have to really just like get into a headspace of like tapping into your horniness, especially because I had never done it before. I think porn stars, like they act more like machines, but I didn't have the like, you know, they, they say it takes 10,000 hours to become, become a, a genius or whatever. I didn't have, I hadn't clocked in the 10,000 hours yet of fucking on camera. So <laughs> it was, it was a bit. It was a bit more difficult for me. I mean, of course, it's, you know, it's a big screen feature. It's one you're no doubt incredibly proud of and have every right to be. Um, in those situations when we do, when, when actors make things that they want to share with people, they generally like to share it with friends and family, parents and siblings. Considering a couple of the scenes in the film, was there anyone you haven't wanted to see the film or anyone you asked to close their eyes at a certain point? <laughs> Not really. I sent I sent a link to my mom and I was like, you know, watch at your own discretion. She wasn't she wasn't she watched it in a fucking like airport terminal. And I'm like, mom, that's crazy. Like, first of all, like, don't watch a movie like that. And so she actually wasn't so disturbed by by the sex. She kind of didn't really understand the movie, which I was upset about. Um and then and then I got mad at her and I was like, you're not understanding the layers of it. So she watched it again and then liked it. Um, but no, I don't I don't care. I mean, I sh I feel like I'm I'm showing very close to everything but my penis on social media. So there's there's nothing really off off limits. Maybe my I don't think my I would want my grandfather to see it probably. But I mean, see, I mean, of course, it's not. I think actually, the, the best. I think my favorite part of this movie is the, is the kind of latter half of it. I think where, where when you're kind of searching for Sebastian, we see you tackle some quite emotionally challenging sequences here. And of course, you know, you're renowned so much for your comedic flair and on social media as well. Yeah. But are you are you interested in doing more kind of dramatic work and tapping into that? You know, you mentioned about the happy clown as being one side of you, yeah. but you see, you know, there are more nuanced and complex layers to all of us. Would you like to explore those in in characters as well? Yeah, for sure. I think I, I don't like movies that have no humor in it at all, like ever. I think like even even the darkest movies, like you look at like Paul Thomas Anderson, who's one of my favorite directors and like all of it, even Phantom Thread, like like all of his movies are funny. And so like anything I, I would love to, you know, explore a more 
like outwardly dramatic role, I guess, but it would have to have some lens of like of humor and so even if it's a very dark humor, like you know, like Cronenberg, like or Yorgos Lanthimos would be a dream. Like those those kind of uh, directors, I think would I would you know of course do anything for them, but. Yeah, of course, I'm definitely interested in it. Like acting, I, I am an actor. So acting is acting to me. And, you know, I don't really think of it as like, this is funny or this is dramatic. I'm just like, this is what the character of the scene is. Yeah, uh, a Lanthimos collaboration would be the dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really would. Um, I was reading, my final question really, because I was reading an interview uh, you did with Vanity Fair and you sort of said something really interesting there, which was you said you'd like to to kind of fully um, uh, transition and never have to make comedy, never have to make a comedy video again. And I was wondering, because I've spoken to comedic actors before and kind of comedy writers, and they have, I've heard kind of comments of that nature. It's quite a well-renowned for being a genre or sort of circuit that can be a challenge to break out of. Do you, I wanted to know if you think the industry has a bit of a kind of issue with pigeonholing uh, and if you've had if you've felt any of that so far in your career you know I, I on like the industry side I haven't felt it like in my in my personal life yes because like it does suck when people like run up to me and say banana bread's publicist because I'm like that's never I'm not even a comedian and like I never was mm. and then like the Instagram thing like came out of boredom in the pandemic but I was a you know I I was a comedy writer like I my my short film call your fathers on the criterion channel like I I was doing this before all of this happened and so of course of course the the fact that people liked it I felt good about that like it was it was it felt really good to make people happy in a very dark time but now that like we're kind of out of <laughs> out of that um I I just want people to see me for who but what I'm actually trying to do and if that isn't comedy. I don't do live comedy. I've I have like been on a stage like a couple times in my life and hated it. Um so I'm not yeah, I'm just I just want to be seen for what I am. Well, voting in the sun will certainly help. Yeah. Go, go, go somewhere and doing that it's a great film and a great performance uh so thank you so much for speaking to me today and the first person I've, I've ever bared my chest to on zoom uh, <laughs> wonderful wonderful yes have a nice right. day <laughs> ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys <laughs> hey you guys hey <laughs> that's what they all say hey you guys hey you guys